Welcome to the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. My name is Amy and I'm from the channel Flip It Furniture and today I want to show you how I blend chalk mineral paint on this dresser. For a list of all the products I use in this video and where to buy them, be sure to check out the description box below. I have already primed the piece using Dixie Bell's Boss in Clear. I did two coats of that so I wouldn't have any tannins or bleed through. The first color I'm using in this blend is Aubergine. Whenever I'm using chalk mineral paint, I have my paintbrush in one hand and I have the water mister in the other hand. I spritz my brush and I mist on the piece and then I don't overload my brush. I put a tiny amount on because you can always come back and add more to your brush. I don't want to have a messy finish, so I'm making sure that there's enough to cover my space, but not too much that it's dripping or globbing. This water mister is the key to a smooth, almost brush stroke free finish. For me, the water mister is just as important as the brush. It allows me to get so much more out of the eight ounces of paint, but it also gives me that fine, smooth finish. It's not like you're completely watering it down because the paint is super pigmented, so you still have your beautiful, gorgeous color. For this design, I want to add the aubergine to the top and then I want to bring it over to the side and follow the curves of the piece. My second color for this blend is going to be muscadine wine. Again, I use my water mister not to soak the piece, but just to give it a nice mist so that when I do add my muscadine wine, it goes on nice and smooth with no brush strokes and it helps me to blend the paint colors with ease. I'm using four colors in total for this piece and they will blend along this beautiful, nice panel at the bottom. At this point, I'm not really worrying about blending the bottom yet. I'm still going to add my muscadine wine to the center of the piece. I drew a line with the muscadine wine across the piece so it would act as a guide so that I would know that the second half of that piece is where I want to add my next two colors. And now that I've colored the center with the muscadine wine, I'm ready to start blending. Right now I still have my muscadine wine brush and I'm just blending the colors together right at the seams. Now I'm gonna grab my aubergine brush because I see there that I don't like the harsh line and I'm gonna start bringing the aubergine down. Again, I didn't, um, I didn't dip my aubergine brush at this point. I just gave it a little spray with water. Now I go back and forth between my brushes until I like the way that it looks. And aubergine and muscadine wine are two colors that blend really nice. I mean, it, they're, it's so easy. So now I start to blend out that bottom. And as you can see, the colors just, <laughs> the more you pull them over to each other, the easier that they blend. Now I'm ready to move over into my next color and that's gonna be Colonial Mustard. I'm not using too much of the colonial mustard. I'm actually using it as a base. I'm gonna mix the muscadine wine with the colonial mustard to make this really warm orange color. And then I'm gonna use another color at the bottom and mix it with that. So you won't see a lot of the mustard. So here with a new brush that I'm using only the colonial mustard with, I'm just filling in that blank space. This is actually my first coat. I'm getting really great coverage and I probably could have got away with only one coat, um, but I do end up adding another coat after this just to make sure that I have full coverage. And I follow that same process with the second coat. But I like to get my blend as good as possible on the first coat so that it's easier on my second. 
I consider the first coat like a practice coat and then I can perfect the blend in the second coat. But for this particular project, this first coat, it's just going on so nice. <laughs> And here's where I take the muscadine wine brush and I start blending to make that warm orange. I'm bringing the muscadine wine right into the colonial mustard, creating a whole new color. Now here I re-dipped back into the muscadine wine and now I'm gonna perfect the top part where the muscadine wine goes into that orangish color and I'm gonna blend that out. And when I'm blending it out, I'm just kinda of going back and forth, um, up and down, side to side, just to get the colors to mix until they look like they're fading into one another. And I start using a dry rag to wipe my brush so that I don't muddy the colors. This can happen when you're blending so many colors on the brush, they start blending on the brush. So then when you put the paint on your piece, you know, you don't really know what color you're going to end up with. And it, it gets a little muddy, like brownish. So you have to be careful that your brushes are clean throughout the process. Now the fourth and final color is gonna be drop cloth, which is a gorgeous cream color. I'm gonna use the drop cloth on the little foot and then I am gonna pull the drop cloth into the colonial mustard. I want the drop cloth and the colonial mustard to mix so that it becomes another color on its own. So you can see I'm kind of bringing the colonial mustard onto the foot and then I'm bringing more of the drop cloth into the colonial mustard, trying to create just a little bit of a lighter color, a, a lighter version of colonial mustard. Now here's where I'm gonna perfect all of these colors in this corner. I'm just taking a tiny bit, I even wiped it off, of the muscadine wine. I didn't dip my brush in the muscadine wine. I'm just using what's left on the brush and I wiped most of it just to gently fade the colors together. Now for the last part, I'm taking a dry brush. This has no paint, it's a fresh dry brush, and I'm going across this little corner to make sure everything is blended. I'm not trying to mix the colors up, I'm just getting rid of any brush strokes. Um, I'm, I'm actually using it like it's a feather. I'm feathering it across the section. Here's what it looked like when it was all finished. I added some copper and bronze gilding wax to all the raised details, to the hardware. And I sealed the piece with Dixie Bell's clear coat in satin. I did refinish the top with the Dixie Bell's no paint gel stain in golden ash. And then the sides are done in muscadine wine. And there it is, a beautiful blend.